darling. You know, my friend Chris H, 121, 25, wrote to me and she said to me, please do something on Marilyn Monroe. I know you used to know her. And I said, oh, Chris, you know, it's all so very, very painful to have to talk about Marilyn. And again, I don't want to talk bad of the dead, darling, but, you know, the trouble is, when you're over 30, everybody's sort of dead or dying. It's, it's a terrible thing. And so it's very hard because you're sort of speaking about all these people, but they're dead. Poor old Marilyn, sweet little thing, though she was. She was my arch enemy, darling. You know, that is just a fact. And it's all because Marilyn thought she could compete with me, and of course, she couldn't. She hadn't an iota of a chance of being more popular with the men than myself. I mean, it's not that I wished to brag. It's just the way that things were. I just had this irresistible appeal, darling. I mean, I couldn't help it. It was just the way I was, you know. And the men just came flocking. And there was Marilyn, and there was me, and the Kennedy boys. Well, I mean, poor Marilyn, she didn't have a chance, darling. I mean, it wasn't that I tried, not at all. But, you know, Marilyn come walking in the room, and it would be like nothing, you know. Whereas me, darling, they were all focused on me. I knew all the boys, of course, all of the boys. But don't think, don't think for one minute that I'm like uh, Joan Crawford, you know. She had a terrible reputation, darling, of sleeping with everything in Hollywood except for Lassie. Well, I wasn't a bit like that, darling. No, no. I was very, very choosy and very discriminating. And I just couldn't help it if these, if these wonderful men of power and fame were drawn to me because I, I just wanted a quiet life, darling. But it just never seemed to happen for me, you know. I was just being swept from one amazing situation to the next. And then there was Marilyn, you know, trying to butt in and sort of, you know, say, here I am. I'm here, by. Look at me. Uh, uh. They weren't interested, sweetheart. They just simply weren't interested. Well, I wasn't going to compete with Marilyn. You know, I just thought, this is beneath me, darling. It's absolutely beneath me. If she wants all those Kennedy boys, she can have them. And I moved on, sweetheart. I don't believe it was my next little plaything. Ah, oh, it was that huge hunk of a man, Muhammad Ali. Oh, what a man he was. Oh, what a man. Oh, Muhammad, I remember so well, darling. I know you're still out there. I remember so well, sweetheart, the day you took me on a picnic up in the Rocky Mountains and you laid the tablecloth out on the ground, and you brought out the egg sandwiches, and the mugs of tea, and the buns, and the chocolate biscuits. Oh, Mohammed, what an absolutely divine picnic we had, even though there was that horrible old hawk above us, hovering around. I knew, I knew, darling, that you were a real man, and that you would look after me should that Hawk descent. I knew you would biff it on the beak. Give it one of your left hooks, you know. Oh, sweet Muhammad. Oh, yes, darling. I say hello to you with an open heart, and I am sure you remember me in the same way. Oh, well, darling, I suppose I've babbled on enough. I'd better go and do things. I have so many things to do. I... I have to find my sunglasses. I lost a pair of sunglasses somewhere around the place, and so I better go and look for them, sweetheart. Thank you for your time. Au revoir. Au revoir, darling. Au revoir.